Hello, thank you for tuning in. Uh, my name is Gabrielle McCray and I'm going to be teaching a photo workshop. Um, I'll be doing a tune called Calico that comes from Marcus Martin and it is in calico tuning. So um, first thing we'll do is help you get to calico tuning if you've never done that before or played in that tuning. So here we are in standard tuning, G, D, A, E. So the first thing we'll do is take your low G string tune it up to an A. So you have octaves there. And then you'll take your D string, tune that up to an E. So you have another set of octaves there. So now we're in cross A, and then we're gonna take, that's A, E, A, E. Now we're gonna take our high E string and tune that down to a C sharp. fine tune that so that um, if you guys want to play along and you've tuned to a tuner, we'll be in with each other. Calico tuning. Um, so I will go ahead and play the tune. Um, I'll play it kind of up to speed. Um, I never like to play this tune super fast though. I think of it as kind of a, a loopier, groovier one. Um, and then I'll play it once through slower and then we'll break it down um, phrase by phrase. So this is Marcus Martin's Calico. Calico, you know, the fingering will be a little bit different from what you're used to on that E string. Um, but one of my favorite things about this tuning is sliding up to that um, second finger on the A string, that C sharp there, you get a really nice unison drone with the open, what is usually the E string, but is now the C sharp. And it can be kind of bluesy and dissonant. Um, so that's just something that's fun to play around with. Um, and this tune starts with starts with that basically. Starts with a slide on the second finger on the A string. So the phrase. And you'll have to jump your middle finger over to that E string really quickly. So it's like jumping from, from A to E string. Uh, well, A to C sharp um, with that same finger right in the first two notes of the tune. Um, and the note you're going to be hitting, it's you're on your second finger, but it's lower than you are on your, your uh, A string. So you slide up to that note, get that in tune, 
and then jump your finger over. You have to pull it down a little bit to be in tune. Because if you just go straight over, it's not a very nice note. So you gotta go down a little bit farther than you might think to get that to that note in tune. So that that phrase again. We'll do it uh, just a few times slow. And um, it jumps the first beat. So if we're counting it off, like with a you know a little shuffle to start out, like one and a two and a three and a four. It starts before that first beat, so it starts on the and a. One, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a. So, we've got. Do that a couple more times. And moving on from there. So the melody is da, 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 da. Um, and normally I would probably do that if I was in regular cross tuning, I would probably do that with my middle finger. But again, we'd have to make that awkward jump and I'm going to try to do that as little as possible because <laughs> it's so awkward. So I'm just going to play that melody on the open string. So, so you've got a bow crossing there or a string crossing on the down bow. string crossing is easier if you just start on both strings even though the melody goes da 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 I'm droning the whole time anyway so if you just play both of those strings at the same time it's really a lot easier to go from from that first note to the second one so the other thing about this phrase is that little bow rock that you might be seeing so if I, if I leave that bow rock out, it's a lot more boring. Like if I'm just going straight down and straight up with my bow, um, it's not as interesting as if you put a nice little rock in there. So the place that happens is... And as you change directions, you're going to put a nice little rock in. So. I think about rounding out the end of my bow stroke instead of going straight down and then straight back up. You're gonna come down and kind of make a swooping motion with your right hand, so. So let's put those two phrases together. We've got that a few times. through I kind of automatically did that awkward string crossing um, with my with my middle finger there um, just because I'm so in the habit of going to that note with that finger um, so I probably would do do both ways in the, in the course of the tune I'd play the open string and I'd also just make that awkward jump and try and make it as sound as good as I can with that finger um, and the reason that we do it we don't use the open note the first time on the da 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 because you could do that open is that we want to get that nice slide in. So. 
So those are the first two phrases. Now we go. up the bowing a little bit there but um, whatever you do with the bowing you want to try to end on an up bow at the end of that phrase there's a lot of different ways you could bow it but you want to end up do that phrase a little bit slower that same moment of deciding whether you're going to make the awkward uh, string crossing with your middle finger or use the open note. They both work, but uh, the open the open string is a little easier. So once you've uh, done that phrase, let's put all three of those phrases together. So. And that last up bow, it's pretty long. Um, like you might be compelled to try to go back down, you know? it's like kind of a long space to fill but resist the urge just keep going up um, and if you like you can put a, li a little pulse in there which adds a little bit of extra rhythm and to get that pulse you would just um, add a little bit of pressure in the place where you want to hear it and move your bow a little bit faster, so. And try and get a nice little bounce too when you're doing that, so. I kind of think about the bow bouncing off of the strings. Okay, so we've got. half of the A part. So then when we come around to the beginning of the next phrase, we're going to do a nice um, big hit on the two low strings, your low A and E, um, just a big fat drone. And then kind of go into the same thing. So instead of, we're going to go. And then after that, it's the same. So it's just the beginning of that first phrase that's different. So the new, the new phrase, the new part of that phrase anyway. And again, we're gonna jump that first beat. It doesn't start right on the one. It starts on the anda that's before the one. So it's a little bit longer than you might think. You have to start it earlier. And then from there, it's the same. So let's try starting with that second, second version of that first phrase. Um, so second half of the A part, starting with that new part and moving on to the rest of the, uh, the A part. Here we go.
So let's put both of those phrases together. So this will be the whole A part. So starting with that slide on the A string on the second finger, and then the second time, start with that big drone. I'll do a four count to start it off. One, and a two, and a three, and a four. We should um, loop that a few times before we go on to the B part. Here we go. I'll do that four count again. We come in on the and a. One, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a. B part starts, um, I'll just play the B part through a couple times um, so we can get that melody in our heads. So it's really just that phrase, it does that three times. So uh, the beginning. So it starts so starting on your open low uh, E string, which is usually a D if you're in standard tuning. And again, I'm using both strings here for almost the whole time. I'm going to be droning pretty heavily. Um, and if you get a nice bounce going, kind of a more of a circular motion in your right arm, um, then you will kind of naturally pop on and off um, of the strings that you're doing melody on. So you can see how much my arm is going up and down um, in addition to back and forth. So instead of so, then we can really add a lot if you can, if you can get that circular motion going. So then to connect those phrases. So we've got. Okay, let's do that a few times. a little ending phrase. And again, you're going to end with kind of that long up bow um, with the option of putting a little pulse in there. So that whole part that's the only phrase that we that we have for the B part. That's all it does. And it does that whole thing three times. So Back into the A part. 
part. three times over um, you can put some variations in that's really fun to mess around with because it's it is a pretty simple part so it's fun to you know have the space to play around with it um, and Marcus Martin had some really cool variations um, that he threw in from time to time on that low part um, so I'll just maybe show you one or two of those so Also, um, at the very beginning of the phrase, instead of starting, you can go. Just add your first finger there, slide up to the first finger on the uh, what would be the D string. I do that a lot. Um, it adds a lot, and it kind of gives a little bit of dissonance to the chord that's being played behind it. But um, the guitar player would just stay, stay on the same um, A chord. That's another one you can go. So maybe I'll just play through um, the B part a couple times, um, throwing in those variations um, for fun. So. a little bit differently. So this is kind of my favorite type of tune, um, a tune that's l less notey and heavy on interesting rhythm um, and with a lot of space for variations and kind of messing around. So it's a great one to start trying to use variations in if you, you know, kind of tend to stick to the same thing every time. Um, this is a great tune to work on that with. Um, and we recorded it, um, the band The Horse Nicks. we recorded it on this album of ours, Fiddlehead. Um, it's the first track, um, but when I learned it, uh, this was a number of years ago, and I didn't realize it was in calico tuning, so I learned it in cross A, and played it in cross A for years. Um, and I also played it for quite a while before I went back and revisited the recording um, of Marcus Martin doing, doing it, and I forgot that the B part goes three times, so I ended up doing it four times because uh, my brain does that sort of thing. Um, so even more space to fool around. So there's a bunch of variations um, that you can hear on that recording. Um, 
and on the Marcus Martin one, which uh, is available on slipperyhill.com. Um, you can find his um, the field recording of him doing it. Um, but you should be aware that he, when he tuned his fiddle, he didn't tune it to you know pitchfork or anything, um, and he tuned really low. So he was in calico tuning, but tuned down to like E or G or something. So um, you'll have to adjust. Um, if you go to play along with him on that recording. Um, but it actually gives it a really cool, spooky, atmospheric sound. Um, so I love tuning my fiddle down to calico tuning, but in G or E even. Um, and it's just really fat, um, spooky, droney sound. Um, super fun to play around with. So anyway, that's the tune. Um, maybe I'll play it once more through up to speed again. Um, so you can play along if you want. Um, and I'll put some variations in that B part. Here we go. tuning in um, and thanks for uh, supporting the Santa Barbara Fiddlers Convention. Um, too bad we can't be there in person but um, this is the second best thing I guess so thank you. Bye-bye.